Hello class, I'm Alex Robillard and uh, my research topic is insurance companies and GIS. In the advertising today for insurance companies, all you hear is that they can save you 15% or more on insurance. And you know, all companies are saying this. But how, how can they? How can they all be able to give these massive discounts on, on insurance? How are insurance companies being so successful that they're offering products and services to customers that need them and at the right price? How are they able to do that? And that is because they're getting so good at determining risk. Risk is the main point insurance companies do because they are dealing with risk. They are transferring the risk from the customer to the company and they are now holding on to a bunch of risk. Um, and they mitigate it by using tools to help lower premiums and this tool is GIS insurance companies are using this today to do underwriting reinsurance corporate government sales and marketing claims handling and risk analysis and they're one of the main users of GIS the reason why I say that is because they are very locational based companies these aren't they it's not like a store I mean location for them is their store but for them they're they're taking on risk and all over the United States or all over the globe they're transferring risk from the customer to them and so they have a lot of risk and they have to know the area enough to know what to insure and to be charging the right premiums and by doing this they have to have information and by doing this, GIS has given them location information data that they're willing to use. Now back uh, early on, they only had a few territories in the United States. They had a thousand territories that had different premiums. That means that split the country up into a thousand parts and each little part was charged the same premium. Well, only a thousand parts that's pretty big then they decided to do it by zip codes zip codes gets a premium so each zip code got a different premium on a company determining by risk and probably past activities in those areas so they did determine premiums for that zip code well now with GIS what it's allowing them to do is minimize these micro territories they're they're making these territories smaller offering people that have riskier properties higher premiums with people with less risk are getting lower premiums and that's just how it should be and now it's becoming that way where it's almost now down to the street level that they're getting premiums on so how many territories are there one insurance company has over 200,000 micro territories in the United States that have different premiums and this could be a bunch in one state depends on their operation but 200,000 compared to 1,000 is incredible change and this is what's allowing most insurance companies able to offer these low premiums here are some of the tools on the screen this is location based intelligence this is the stuff they're using today to determine risk to respond to claims quicker and watch real time weather happen. And we'll get that to example in the next slide. America Mutual Insurance is a really big home life and policy insurance company. They usually insure along the coastline from Texas all the way up to New York. And uh, they are a coastline uh, insurance company what do you expect they are going to get hit with some with quite a few claims when hurricane season rolls around uh, this is a picture of Irene when it hit but this was hours before it hit land they knew that what was going to be damaged what claims in that area were going to be affected they took the intensity of the wind which is the red yellow and the green usually in a hurricane it's wind damage and it's flooding so it's uh 
mix, 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 mix basket here. And you can see that they have a lot of claims in this area. So what this insurance companies do, do is that they already put these into the claim service. They know that these, all these uh, areas in this zone, the green, the yellow, and the red, they will send that already over to claims waiting for when the, the clients call in. This will be able to give them faster claim service. Along with that, it will give them customer service because now they know that these people are, because they know their geographic location of where their property is, they can see if they're in need of help. They could give them hotel vouchers. They can give them car rental vouchers to get them, you know, what they need because they are insured by the company. So this helps with the faster claim service and um, customer service aspect. Now, adjustable premium zone, that's kind of what I talked about there with the territories. They're minimizing these territories. Well, look, you know, if we look here on this map, we have the people along the coastline. Well, they have probably have a lot higher premium than someone in Missouri. Um, it's just the way it works. Um, and this allows them to predict more risk. Um, what it's allowing them to do to get a geographic location of someone's property or someone's house that they're insuring or a building they're insuring, they're putting a pinpoint on the map. That way they can now measure the distance or look at weather patterns and keep uh, every, you know, I think they've done every hurricane pass since uh, 1980 or before that. 1950 every hurricane path and they marked them and they saw where each path went anyone in that path that has been run over twice got double premium yes it's not good for them but they do have more risk than more than other people so now it's be almost becoming personalized insurance it's becoming almost personalized to where you live it's and as we can see progressive starting to do that with their snapshot in their car uh, they are starting to monitor how you drive, how you brake, where you're going. That's the future. Uh, they want to start looking at where your radius of driving is. Is it on a safe highway? Is it on a dangerous highway? Is it in high traffic? Is it in low traffic? Is you know this? These are all things that are going to be coming into a factor with almost car insurance, and then with property insurance, it'll be a little different. It's more or less location based on that and whether and how far fire uh, stations are away and how quick uh, quick responders are far away and, and water uh, mains are from your house and so it's really becoming more personalized as we go for forward into the future with insurance so as we see here this is Irene this is the aftermath in uh, I believe this is New York And there are claim services that happen. A lot of them were flooding. A lot of them were uh, wind damage. Uh, like this claim right here, roof damage, SJ 55,000, major holes, water damage, and bedroom, and windows, let rain in. And it gives a picture of the house and the adjuster. I mean, if uh, I was a claim agent I would love to have this this would be a nice tool to have I can see where they're located I can see oh wow he's close by the water um, that storm probably bring in uh, one heck of a storm being on the coast there and so we'll pay his claim now if you saw one way out here in uh, uh, Newtown that's kind of far out not fully in New York or didn't get hit and you have a claim there you might want to look into it and it might be suspicious it could be fraud it could be someone trying to claim something that's really not there and trying to pull a fast one on the insurance company by having geolocation you can kind of see where what damage hit or what missed and you can kind of make a, a good analysis on it but I mean I'm not saying he could be lying or it automatically detect for fraud. I'm just saying go investigate and check in further. Now, what uh, GIS is turning into um, when they don't have data, when they don't have weather maps, and they don't, and it's an instant catastrophe. Like uh, 
the nuclear explosion in Japan or or uh, the tsunami that happened. Well, they didn't have much data. Uh, this company did. They didn't have any data, but they had claims there, and they could not tell where where what where is what. Well, now what they've done is they've reached out to social media, Twitter, Flickr, and YouTube, which uh, do carry a location uh, prompt when uploading, if if allowed. And what they've done is they've pinpoint these videos on a geolocation to view where it is, and they can kind of get a view of what the damage has done. Uh, see if it you know if you have uh, you do it a mile radius around you and found a hundred YouTube videos or pictures on uh, social media around the property you're insuring and you see that they're all flooded and then the houses are floating away you might think that your your property there is totaled and you would probably want to make sure that to get in and get that claim fixed right away and now most of the people say what well, like well how, how was this handled in the past well, in the past, they had a way for first responders to go in. First responders would go in, take maybe four to five days, six days to come go in there, analyze it, and send out a report to the insurance company and determine these. Well, now insurance companies are can be able to do this in hours. They're able to get people quicker on the claims to get back to life and start building. Um, this is just, you know, it's becoming a lot quicker. And by allowing um, insurance companies these tools, they don't have to wait four or five days to make to process claims. They can look into it, they can investigate it using their analytics, and make the determination on the claim. So really, insurance companies and GIS go well. GIS and insurance companies go really well well together. They mix very well, uh, and they co-mingle. I mean, it, it's insurance companies need location-based, and that's what they're selling, location-based products, and, and risk analysis on location is a big thing. And that is all I have for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you guys all uh, next semester. Um, have a great rest of uh, the summer and the weekend. Uh, thank you.